Chief Justice rules no confidence motion was properly passed. President and Cabinet should consider it resigned. Chief Justice of Orms 33 is an absolute majority of all elected members of the National Assembly. British government fired a so-called advisor after he set up business in Guyana. And in sport, England bowled out for 187 as West Indies fast bowlers prevail. These and more right now in this our Thursday, January 31, 2019 edition of News Update. Good evening, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Thanks for joining us. Acting Chief Justice Roxon George Wilshire today ruled that a vote of Chandar's pursuit is valid regardless if he was the holder of a Canadian passport at that time. She affirmed that a vote of Prasad cannot invalidate the motion despite it was found that he is not qualified to be a member of parliament. Godfrey Brooms opens tonight's broadcast with that story. In the case filed by Compton Reid, he wanted Charandas Prasad to be disqualified as a member of parliament, saying he was not qualified to be selected as one. The applicant also wanted an order setting aside the ruling of the speaker and stay in the resolution of the motion that it is passed. But the CJ did not rule in the applicant's favor. During a lengthy presentation of her decision, Chief Justice Roxon George Wilshire made the ruling that the Charandas Prasad's vote is valid despite he is a dual citizen. She noted that Article 58 does not say the vote by an unqualified MP is annulled. The Chief Justice proclaimed, the applications requested by Reid cannot be granted to invalidate Resolution 101 by Speaker Dr. Barton Scotland that effectuated or qualified the passage of the motion and to preserve the status quo of the government. Under the argument of dual citizenship, the CJ announced that the motion and the vote are valid. Um, I am happy that um, almost every submission which I have made was upheld by the Learning Chief Justice and we must congratulate and thank the Chief Justice for a very uh, thorough job done and a lot of work was done in these matters but they have settled matters of, of, of vital national importance and hopefully now the way has been cleared for the constitutional provisions to be complied with. And those provisions are that elections must be held within the time frame stipulated by the Constitution. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news on the Chief Justice's ruling on the no confidence motion after the break. Stay with us. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. When you need money and you gotta get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop. Be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. 
Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Secure your property, secure your life, get the best security service from us at KGM Security Services Incorporated. Highly trained armed and unarmed officers at affordable rates. We offer armed mobile patrols, personal security, cash escort, alarm monitoring, quick response units, also rental of executive vehicles with armed guards. 74 Axora Avenue, Bellier Park, Georgetown. Contact us on 663-3227-699-0084 or 654-1800. KGM Security Services Incorporated. We are your source for security. Did you know almost one-third of deaths in Guyana are heart-related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Computer high tech at the height of technology. 42 Gold Street, Stavro. Telephone 223 Make an impression with the finest styles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various styles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. For the best in truck spares, Daff and Cummings, it's A1 out of value new road freedom hoop on the west side. Check them out today for seals, alternators, filters, air valves, pistons and rings, air dryers, shocks, bearings and a whole lot more. Parts and accessories for cars and minibuses. Call today on 254-0890. 64 New Road Freedom Hoop on the west coast of Demerara. A1 Auto Value. Performance without compromise. With thousands of items to choose from at everyday low prices, it's a guarantee that you'll save big at Raymond Hannum's General Store. From local products to the best foreign brands, you'll find everything you need and so much more. When we say more, we mean more. More products for more savings. Expect more, pay less. Raymond Hannah's General Store, 48 Princess Street, Georgetown, Guyana. Did you know that Hand in Hand is the longest established property insurer in Guyana? We've been serving Guyanese for over 151 years. You can visit our 15 offices countrywide, whether you're in Burbese, East Coast, East Bank, Linden, West Coast, Essequibo, or in Georgetown. You will enjoy competitive rates and a superior customer service, as well as our convenient payment options through MMG and Scotia Online. Hand in hand, safeguarding your family, always secure. The Opposition People's Progressive Party is pleased with the ruling of the Chief Justice. It intends to mount more pressure on the Ghana Elections Commission to act in accordance with the Constitution. Opposition leader Bar Jagdio today said he was pleased with the ruling handed down by Chief Justice Roxon George Wilshire. Chief Justice Roxon George Wilshire today ruled that a confidence motion was validly passed on December 21, 2018. This means the President and Cabinet would have to resign and elections must be held by March 19, 2019. 
The Chief Justice deemed 33 as the absolute majority in the 65 members National Assembly. The opposition leader said the government procrastinating on the ruling can lead the country into a constitutional crisis. So the legislature was very clear about the passage of the no confidence motion. We were awaiting the judiciary and now the judiciary has spoken clearly that the no confidence motion has been passed and there is no stay of that decision. So right now the government has to act in accordance with Article 1066 of the Constitution, which states that the cabinet and the president shall resign upon the so successful passage of the no confidence motion. And it must also proceed in accordance with Article 1067 of the Constitution, which is to hold elections in 90 days. He said more pressure should now be mounted on the Ghana Elections Commission to act in accordance with the Constitution. The opposition leader reiterated suspicions about its delayed tactics to stymie the holding of royal elections through political directives. And so over the next couple of days, even if it means legal action to force GCOM to start the preparations for elections, and, and they can do this all within the next 50 days, um, whole elections because we believe the basis is there for that to happen having successfully come out of a, a local government elections then th they can easily do this but they're unwilling to do this because of the government um, sending signals to them that they should not do so so we'll have to push put pressure on the 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 machinery at gcom and the commission Jack the urge for civil society and the international community to make stringent calls for the government to respect the constitution. It was government member Chardas Persaud who voted in favor of the opposition-sponsored confidence motion, which saw the government toppled on December 21. Meanwhile, the arguments of Attorney General Basil Williams failed to convince the Chief Justice that 34 votes represent a majority of all elected members of the National Assembly. The Chief Justice ruled that a no-confidence motion was lawfully passed as 33 is greater than 32. Godfrey Brooms reports. Addressing the arguments of an absolute majority, the Chief Justice Roxon George Wilshire asserted that the contention of Attorney General Basil Williams is misguided. A.G. Williams contends that 33 cannot be an absolute majority when the number equates a simple majority. Crushing his arguments, the CJ concluded that 33 members makes up an absolute majority in Guyana's National Assembly, considering that there are 6 to 5 elected members. Williams claims that there must be 34 votes to represent an absolute majority and to pass a confidence motion. The Chief Justice noted, the issue of rounding up is not applicable to Guyana's case as Article 1066 does not make any reference to any fraction. According to the Chief Justice, the court cannot set aside a ruling of the Speaker, nor can it set aside a resolution unless it is unconstitutionally done. As such, she affirmed, the ruling of the Speaker that the motion was carried by a majority of all elected members of the National Assembly is valid. Further, she noted the government cannot remain in office beyond three months, the period that is required for the holding of fresh elections, unless that time is extended by a two-thirds majority of the National Assembly. Following the ruling, A.G. Williams asked for a stay of ruling and for a conservatory order seeking to preserve the status quo of the government. He based his application on the government's intention to appeal the matter. But, attorney for the opposition leader, Anil Nandlal, objected to the application of Williams on the ground that the court only answered questions put forth by him. He continued that the court has not made any positive order, but simply declared what transpired in the National Assembly on December 21, 2018, complied with the laws of Guyana. The Chief Justice then denied his application. It was a well-reasoned judgment, but we do not agree with some of our conclusions. She has ruled that she has no jurisdiction to entertain five of our declarations because 
she is saying that Article 163 of the Constitution puts the court, give the courts, confer the court with power to determine anything that has to do with elections. I think the Chief Justice has taken a conservatory approach. We expect to see some judicial activism. Quatry Brooms, MTV, News Update. The British High Commission in Guyana has announced that Special Advisor to the highly controversial Special Organized Crime Unit, Dr. Sam Sillington, has been fired with immediate effect in light of information he has set up a private business in Guyana. British High Commissioner to Guyana, Greg Quinn, in a statement said he distanced himself and by extension his country from the move by Sillington to establish his own local investigative firm in Guyana named the Fraud Company Guyana Inc. Conflict of interest concerns were cited at Sittlington, a United Kingdom white collar crime expert, was working under the auspices of the British High Commission in Guyana as an advisor to SOHO, an investigative arm of the Ghana Police Force. According to documents seen by sections of the media, Sittlington, who outlined his occupation as a consultant, will be the director of the above mentioned company. The company was incorporated under the Companies Act of Guyana in September of 2018. After the Starbuck News broke the story, many have since described Sillington's action as highly unethical for a consultant who is being paid by a foreign government to advise and train a sensitive department such as Sogu to establish a company which undertakes similar work. There were also concerns that Sillington has access to highly confidential information on numerous persons at Sogu and has embarked on fishing expeditions on most of the cases on the investigation. As such, a major concern was that information gleaned from Sogo could be used inappropriately. The Opposition's People's Progressive Party, which had accused the incumbent administration of using Sogo to target former government ministers, had raised concerns over Sillington's role with Sogo and his presence in Guyana. Crime continues to occur in daily in Guyana, with the latest being threats to the bomb school of the nations. The People's Progressive Party, who is not pleased with the current crime-fighting strategy, promises to implement a more robust and quantifiable one with victory at the next general election. The police force has recently reported a decrease in serious crimes, but persons are being processed by the courts every day for crimes they are suspected of committing. There is an ongoing threat to riddle persons with bullets and to bomb School of Nations by persons unknown. This follows the wanton shooting of the school's director while he was entering his home. Additionally, a young man who hails from LBI died on Monday owing to injuries he sustained whilst at the Sparendam police station. Also, a motorcyclist is on the run after he crashed into and killed a pensioner on the Nimes public road, abandoning his motorbike. With these being the norm, the opposition People's Progressive Party is not entirely pleased with the efforts of the Guyana Police Force and the strategy the government was expected to produce. Making another promise, opposition leader Barrett Jagdi avowed that the PBP will put in place a robust plan to combat crime. And that we would see in our party manifesto the elements of a crime-fighting strategy that will see a reduction in crime too. All of these things, because that affects businesses, it affects ordinary citizens, the quality of health care does that too. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. More news coming up after the break. Stay with us. The colors of you. Available at Infinity Color Shop, Princess and High Street, Georgetown. Telephone 226 7693. Are you invited to that important event but don't know what to wear or frustrated you're wearing the same dress as everyone else? You crave for this exclusive look? Then do just that with dresses from Exclusive Dresses to Impress. Visit Exclusive Dresses to Impress at Giveland Mall. Contact number 6570166.
Are you building or renovating? Then Gaffers is the place to shop for all your construction needs. Our flat pack department has a wide range of doors, including wooden doors in pine, purple heart, crabwood, bifold, arch, full and half French, fiberglass garage doors, and Mexin steel doors. Our Mexin doors are durable, and they're available in a wide range of designs. For safety, our doors include 12 locks, viewers, buzzers, and frames. For your kitchen, we have a wide range of elegant and durable quartz, granite and laminated countertops, and cabinet doors. You'll find laminated, bamboo, and PVC flooring to suit your style and decor while upgrading the entire look and feel of any room. Then choose from our wide selection of PVC ceiling panels, ceiling tiles, moldings, and rosettes. Also built in our flat pack department is sheeting for interior and exterior use, such as plywood, gypsum board, cement board, and MDF board. So come on down to Gafu's flat pack department for your construction and finishing needs, and Miss Camlo will assist you to select products for your total satisfaction. Gafu's, the name you can trust. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. on windows and doors, fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property, or just upgrading your home, they got you covered. Beeson Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 622-6943. Top Printing and Signs, for quality and affordable printing and signs. For your business, flyers, copies, business cards, brochures, posters, banners, A-frame signs, roll-up banners, top printing and signs, company stationaries and supplies, top printing and signs, vehicle graphics, storefront signs, 3D and vinyl cut letters, and much more. Top printing and signs, custom design and printing of wedding invitations and funeral programs. Top printing and signs, professional and efficient with great customer service and quick turnaround time. Top printing and signs. 234 South Road, Lacey Town, Georgetown, Guyana. Call us today at 223-4555 or 695-2199. Top Printing and Signs. Excellent Creole dishes. Fresh bread and pastries. Yes. Breakfast and lunch available fresh Mondays through Fridays. We open 7 a.m. Delivery available. Wholesale breads and pastries available soon. Call 219-5003. With three locations. Lot 5 Tenna Street, Sophia. 36 Durban Street, GPO Building. Dion's Delight Catering Service. We cater for all occasions. Save big with everyday low prices at Highway 401 Furniture Store. Choose from our huge inventory of elegant home furnishing or let's build you a custom piece to suit any room in your home. Elegant dining room set to sophisticated living room designs. Accessorize your kitchen with modern pieces from our collection. Transform your bedroom with standard king size beds and mattresses, bedside sets, and vanities. Shop now. Save big at Highway 401 Furniture Store. Making your home a beautiful place. Financing and layaway plans available. Welcome back. You're watching MTV's News Update. As complaints of suspicious field exercises continue in some regions, the Ghana Elections Commission will be stringently monitoring the reports. Here are the details. As the Guyana Elections Commission prepares for the possibility of early elections, it has received reports and persons of suspicious field exercises. 
The Commission received reports via calls to its offices querying whether field exercises were ongoing. The persons on the pretense as representatives from the Commission were seeking personal information. Public Relations Officer Yolanda Ward told this newscast that persons were asked to provide their names and identification numbers. Persons from Regions 2, 3, 4 and 5 have contacted the Secretariat, but the Commission did not check for similar incidences in the other regions. The Commission is urging persons to be cautious and desist from providing information to persons with harmful motives. As the reports continue to climb, the Commission will ascertain whether it should be seriously addressed. All reports are being monitored by the Ghana Elections Commission at this time. The Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit now has three persons in custody after large quantities of narcotics were unearthed at St. Stephen Street, Charlestown. Three suspects have been arrested by ranks of the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit and are in custody assisting with the investigation into the Charlestown drug bust on Tuesday. 23-year-old Ebony Craig of Lamhouse Springs, Sophia, Courtney Demonic, 58 years of St. Stephenson Street, Charleston, was arrested. Another suspect, a Route 42 motor vehicle driver, was taken into custody yesterday morning to assist with investigation. Ranks swooped down on a house on Tuesday where a large quantity of narcotics suspected to be cocaine and cannabis were discovered. A total of 20 grams of cocaine and 89.23 kilograms of cannabis were found. With this in mind, the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit will be seeking to tighten its grip on narcotic distributors throughout the country. All suspects are in custody pending the completion of the investigation. No charges have yet been filed. The father of six-year-old Ahil Ali of charity Esiquipicos is pleading with the general public to assist financially in having his son, who was recently diagnosed with hydrocephalus, to undergo emergency surgery in Colombia to remove the tumor. According to 32-year-old Wambalus Ali, his son Ahil, on a Monday morning in August 2018, awoke to excruciating pains in his head, feeling nauseous. The man claimed, following bouts of vomiting that very morning and falling in and out of consciousness, he quickly took his son to the charity hospital where he was admitted as a patient for several weeks, undergoing multiple tests. Based on a CT scan, Ali explained his son was diagnosed with a mass in a section of the brain. Ali explained he was advised to have his son undergo an MRI for a more accurate diagnosis. According to the distraught father, it was that diagnosis which concluded his six-year-old son has hydrocephalus. So we carried the hospital in, in Esquibo and from there we then transferred to Saudi and from Saudi then transferred to Jarachang Hospital. And well, he was in an unconscious state and um, when we reached the Jarachang Hospital and uh, we have to do a scan, a um, CT scan, and the CT scan showed that he had extra fluids in the brain, and we had to do a surgery in um, the yard down there for uh, hydrocephalus. And from there, we, um, he still was, from the surgery, then put in the um, ICU, and he spent um, six weeks in the ICU, unconscious state. According to Ali, payment for his son's brain surgery in Colombia will cost the sum of U.S. $39,501. Ali, a salesman by trade, says since the MRI and the surgery at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation, his son's mobility has diminished greatly. His son, he said, could barely stand or walk for a few seconds without fainting. The man explained due to the pressure on his son's brain from the growth and the excess fluid, his son is partially blind in the left eye. Due to drooling being one of the symptoms of hydrocephalus, the child's upper airways became obstructed, the father said. As a result, Ahil underwent a tracheotomy which minimized his breathing problems. According to the young father, the doctors informed him that these are some of the major implications on persons with hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is a chronic neurological condition caused by an abnormal accumulation of cerebrospinal fluid resulting in pressure on the brain. Anyone interested in assisting young Ahil Ali to raise funds for his surgery in Colombia can make contact with his parents on telephone numbers 648-4828 and 657-8971 or make direct contributions via their Republic Bank account number on 599-5725. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. 
We now join Kipani Jordan with your tips for healthy living. Nuts provide key proteins and nutrients, good fats, antioxidants, aid in the reduction of cholesterol, and help you live longer. Below are some of the key benefits of a few different varieties of nuts. Almonds, highest in calcium of all nuts. Almonds are also high in fiber, vitamin E, and magnesium. Almonds help lower cholesterol and reduce the risk of heart disease and can help protect against diabetes. Cashews, rich in iron, high in magnesium, and the unsaturated fat is predominantly oleic acid. Cashews help prevent cancer, promote a healthy heart and strong bones, and are also good for your skin and hair. Walnuts, high in omega-3 fats, antioxidants, and phytosterols. Walnuts are good for your heart, can help protect against cancer, and are good for your brain, aiding in reducing depression and the risk of age-related diseases such as Alzheimer's disease. Hazelnuts, rich in unsaturated fats, high in magnesium, calcium, and vitamins B and E. Hazelnuts are good for your heart, help reduce the risk of cancer, and aid in muscle, skin tone, joint, and digestive health. Peanuts, technically a legume, highest amount of folates compared to other nuts. Folates are essential for brain development. Peanuts promote a healthy pregnancy because of the high folates which help reduce the risk of birth defects. Peanuts also boost memory, help fight depression, and reduces the risk of heart disease. And finally, pecans. Although high in calories and fat, they are so good for you, especially men. Pecans contain betacetesterol, which aids in the relief of an enlarged prostate. The bottom line is, all nuts are good for you. The key is moderation. A healthy handful can lead to good health and longer life. So go nuts! Here is Rajesh Lakhan with this week's edition of What Do People Say? Do you believe Guyanese are getting quality health care at the public hospitals and clinics? Bearing in mind the many complaints about deaths and unavailability of medications at public hospitals, here is what the people had to say. Well, the policy makers and the decision makers got to make it more, uh, what do you call it, make it more um, satisfactory to the nation, you would agree. I think with any, any public system you have issues, but I think that the, the system could be improved greatly for the, the length of time you have to wait to be served, sometimes very frustrating, but um, unless we have persons at the top who are um, dealing with persons and ensuring that people do what they're paid to do, we may never have a change. It all goes back to us wanting a better Guyana, individually. And again, I'll say it's because of management who is not um, paying keen attention to the service offered to the persons who they are paying. It all goes back to the top because private systems are better compared to government systems anywhere in the world government systems, people feel as if they can do whatever they want to do and not held accountable for their actions. Unlike private, you know you didn't work, you will not be paid, easily fired. But the government, it's all about who knows who. With that said, um, in terms of shortage of um, medication and the public health system? Well, I'm just hearing I don't know. I haven't been there in a while. So I can't say that I, I know about the shortage, but I've heard issues where they do not have enough medication or the correct medication and substitutes are being used. I do not know how, how, um, how true that is, but these were patients who have visited, so I guess it's true. Right? So we need to take that into consideration as well and get to the root of the reason why, because we do not know why. Right? So once we understand and know why there's a shortage, then we can deal with the problem. I don't know why. The government said it's free medical. And you can't get no free medical. You go, if I'm, I'm, I'm living in Eskimo, and you go there, and when you go to the, the medical facilities, they, they give you a prescription that you go and buy. Or if you, they give you a prescription, you go to the, the drugstore or the pharmacy there, they don't have. They tell you, well, we don't have this, we don't have that. 
you have to go and buy elsewhere. And who do you think should be held responsible for this? Uh, the, the, the person who is responsible, the Minister of Health. Because if so many money be voted all the time for health care, what they are doing with this money? Are they spending the money in the rightful way? I don't feel that they are doing that. Well, this is a fortunate um, day for me that you guys have stopped me to ask such a question. And um, my answer to that question is definitely no. Because I remember a few days ago, I was at Port Moran's hospital, where, as my first visit, I find there that it's very deplorable. And I question myself, why? What's the government doing about this, the health system? What is really going on? Why they can't, you know, upgrade the hospital, seeing that it is an outreach hospital out of town, and the patients, the way they're being handled and the condition of that facility is very, very deplorable, right? Whereas I'm considering the infection control and things like that. Also, as to the benefit of drugs and things like that, I feel that um, patients should more or less get free access of drugs and medications that will, you know, able to enhance their recovery and things like that. So that's a major problem. I mean, I have not gone to the other facilities, but more likely, I think they need to upgrade the facilities and the way how they're treating patients. You know, that also should be respected. Quality care, that's the most important thing. Given your experience, you think Forest Authority needs to be held more accountable? Well, yes, the Ministry of Minister of Health, more likely, even though they have, uh, in the different regions, they have um, representatives of the Ministry of Health, more likely, I think that they should be inspecting these facilities and pay more attention. Well, to some extent, yes. To some extent. Um, uh, I think countrywide, especially in the interior, in the country areas, they're suffering. Uh, there seems to be a concentration basically in the Georgetown area and if you go to the clinics in the Georgetown area they seem to have ample supplies of what you need but in the country areas like they need a more proper administration I would say basically need more administration and supply of drugs on a consistency basis so that as before in fact it finishes there must be proper administrators who will be ordering before it's finished it's a matter of ordering, you know, and getting your facts right. But I think they do have it. It's just to put, put it in motion because, I mean, you can't, uh, besides the emergency hospital in Georgetown or what have you, where the service is very poor. You have women going there and dying and what have you. Um, the the outer clinic and the regional clinics in the area are not too bad. That's my view. Do you think forces should be held more accountable in authority? Well, of course they should be because they haven't got proper managers. But you do the sequential ordering, they, they haven't got that. They have the drugs, it's just it's not in the place where it should be. I am so much concerned because as a mother of four, I'm concerned because I have children and sometimes I don't have the money to go to the private institution and I need them to have proper care. For MTV News Updates, I'm Rajesh Lakan. We now join Celine Griffith with your court roundup. A former murder accused was today committed to stand trial at the Supreme Court of Judicature as the preliminary inquiry into a rape charge concluded today before CT Magistrate Leron Daly. 41-year-old Odingo Green of Station Street Kitty was charged in November of last year for the rape of a child under the age of 16. The charge read that he engaged in sexual activity with a child between the 1st and 30th of November 2016. The child was 13 years old at the time. In September of 2015, Green was freed of the murder of Nazaline Mohammed. The judge had stated that the prosecution failed to make a case against him. 
The prosecution's case was that Green murdered the woman between the 2nd and 12th of February 2007 after he picked her up from her East Rumfeld home. It was alleged that he took the woman to Linden, killed her and removed her jewelry. In 2004, Green was convicted and sentenced to death for the murder of Sandra Harvey. Harvey was found in the valley at Wizrock Linden in the year 1999. Her hands were tied behind her back, her mouth was gagged and her body was bracing against a tree. Green, however, appealed the verdict and won the right to a second trial. Green was freed at the end of the second trial after the testimonies provided by witnesses proved highly inconsistent. Reporting for MTV's Court Roundup, Celine Griffith. Coming up after the break, MTV's sports update and more. Stay with us. Hey, you have a growing flesh there, and there too, and there is another one. Those ugly and annoying growing flesh, like a plague, ignoring them, and before you know, you have them everywhere. Slimjet presenting Coliomac, the most effective growing flesh and wall remover. Painlessly remove ugly growing flesh is the quick and effective way. Get soft, smooth, growing flesh-free skin, guarantee. Just apply Colomac twice a day and the growing flesh just dry up and fall off. Easy, quick, and painless. Stop suffering and feeling embarrassed. Remove those ugly growing flesh with Colomac. Only at Slimjet, City Mall, second floor, For all your supermarket needs, check out Nervous at 49 Sheriff and Craig Street, Georgetown. We have a wide variety of groceries, confectioneries, alcohol and non-alcohol beverages. Fresh meat, fruits and vegetables also available. Don't forget to check out our cosmetics section. Best prices, great deals. happens your septic tank is full all the waste from your toilet goes into your septic tank through the sewage line when your tank is full the two most common indicators are an overflowing tank and an overflowing toilet it is recommended that Sivan's waste management empty your septic tank every two to three years to avoid any embarrassment and before you can say shh it's gone Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. Check out NNY Apparels and Boutique for all your beautiful shalwars, gararas, saris, lehengas, squirtas, and children outfits. Bridal outfits for men and women. We also have in stock Indian jewelry and footwear. Puja items, wedding items, malas, mortis, jandy flags, and much more. So come down to NNY Apparels and Boutique located at Lot A, Belmont, Mahaika, in the Market Square, bottom floor of the mall. Or contact us on telephone number 676 3710. Visit us now for all your Indian items at reasonable prices. Introducing the new Softex Soft toilet, toilet tissue, tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, soft to, and every gentle touch. to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is, is clear. clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Champion whole wheat show, man. It's 100% whole wheat. That's why it's my number one choice. As a mom, you want your kids to eat healthy. At 
any age, eating healthy is not an option, it's a must. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick fit for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Your one-stop decor solution for gala dinners, weddings, birthdays, cocktail functions, backdrops, props, and more, check out exclusive decor design Ground Floor City Mall. We have a wide variety to suit your stylish seating and table decor, exclusive centerpieces, colorful marrow, and much more. Working with a small budget? No problem. We've got you covered. Call 225-4434 or 657-0166. We listen, we create, you enjoy. Drivers who want to get the most out of their cars. It's Bridgestone or nothing. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome to MTV's Sports Update. Johnny Bairstow was fighting a lone counter-attacking hand as the West Indies fast bowlers against ripped through the England top order with the visitors stumbling after being bowled out for 187 on the opening day of the second test in Antigua earlier today. Putting on a green pitch at the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium which challenged the batsmen through pace and variable bounce, Alzari Joseph took two wickets while Kima Roach bagged four, Sharon Gabriel bagged two and Jason Holder claimed just one. It was the end of a near perfect day for the West Indies, having won a battle toss and bowled with Malvin intent, even a too little erratic at times, they managed to have the visitors dismissed. England's openers showed restraint and determination to survive an angry spell from stored board. The pitch seemed to have flattened, both with the West Indies trailing by 157 runs with 10 wickets remaining at the sums. If the pitch remains that way tomorrow, England are in a great deal of trouble. DeAndre Dutton and Cheeda Nation led the West Indies women to a fervent 71 run win in the first T20 international against Pakistan women in Karachi. Pakistan would have hoped for a better show in their 100th T20I, but the duel's unbroken 109-run stand lifted the visitors to a competitive 160 for 2 before the bowlers combined to bowl the hosts out for 8-9 and nine in 18 overs earlier today. The Windies won the toss and elected to bat. Dotton and Kaisian Knight got off then to a good start, adding 34 runs in just 3.3 overs before Knight was caught by Ayman Anwar off Nashar Sandhu for 8. Dotton continued her attack, taking her team past 50 before Shemaine Campbell was run out on 4 with a score 51 for 2. 
Nation and Dotton then combined for a spectacular display of power. It was Nation's maiden T20I half century, and she hit four fours and two sixes. Dotton smashed eight fours and four sixes. In reply, just two of Pakistan's batters, Javeria Khan and Bisma Maroof, reached double digit scores as Shamilia Connell and Shakira Salman ran through the top order. Anissa Mohammed, Afi Fletcher, and Dotton finished off with the ball. Pakistan was never in control of the run chase, losing four of their top five batters in the first ten overs. Maroof tried to lead a revival with her 37 ball knock, which included five boundaries, but found little support at the other end. The win gives the visitors a 1 0 lead in the three match series. The second match is set to be played again tomorrow in Karachi. Chelsea Griffiths, reporter for MTV Sports Update. The return of the international fast bowler Ravi Rampal will be one of the highlights when the West Indies Championship's sixth round of the Regional 40 tournament resumes. Though interest will be divided, due to the crucial second test between Windies and England, which started earlier today at the Sir Vivian Richards Cricket Ground, the return of 34-year-old fast bowler Ram Paul to Trinidad and Tobago's Red Force lineup for the first time in almost six years is bound to turn heads. Rampal has been playing in the English County Championship for the last three seasons and he has been brought back in a bid for the Red Force to slow down front runners and four-time defending champions Guyana Jaguars in their match at the Queen's Park Oval. Red Force will be looking to have the return of Rampal and the appointment of former Windies fast bowler Mervyn Dillon to the head coaching job replacing national all-rounder Kelvin Williams will turn their luck following the three-day defeat against Pride in the previous round in Trinidad. The hosts will need the combination of Rampal's skills and Dillon's knowledge to give them a further edge against their opponents. However, history strongly favours the Roaring Jaguars' domination as they have won all but one of the eight contests in the Professional Cricket League franchise era of the championship over the last five years. Chelsea Griffiths, reporter for MTV Sports Update. Like all players in a World Cup year, surviving the coach's cut is never far from Carl Snickler's mind. But back in 2006, age 13, he was helping make the calls rather than being subject to them. Graveney School's first rugby team was Snickler in the back row, fifth from left. A few weeks earlier, Snickler, who started playing at nearby Battlesea Aaron Strides, had approached Long to ask her to set up the state school's first rugby team. It soon became clear that the two would have to collaborate. The team was a success. They beat most of their state counterparts before ruffling feathers among South London's fee-paying and facility-rich school boys. We tell you now that the Petra Organization's Forest Football Tournament of the Year just so happens to be the 7th Milo School's football competition. Like last year, multiple-time champions Chase Academic Foundation has been excluded from this year's event, which will see a total of 24 teams participating. Six new teams have joined due to the fact that teams view the event as a fair playing field where anyone can come out on top. BPAT's distributors through their Nestle Milo brand are the title sponsors of the event for the seventh consecutive year and are proud to be associated with the event. The Guyana Football Federation's technical department is set to be on hand for required assistance to teams and identify potential talented youths during the tournament. The tournament kicks off on February 9 at the Ministry of Education's ground on Carfesta Avenue and will conclude on April 14. Chelsea Griffith, reporter for MTV Sports Update. More news after the break. Stay with us. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. You're still with News Update, now for some news in the region. Venezuela's self-declared interim president, Juan Guaido, has said his family has been threatened amid the country's continuing political crisis. In a speech at Venezuela's Central University, he said police had visited his family home looking for his wife. Mr. Guaido declared himself president this month and was immediately recognized by the U.S. and several Latin American countries. Russia, China and Mexico back President Nicolas Maduro. Military support is seen as crucial to Mr. Maduro's hold on power. But Mr. Guaido says he has held secret meetings with the military to win support for ousting Mr. Maduro. 
On international scene, at least eight people have died in the U.S. Midwest as the region shivers in the grip of its worst cold snap in decades. An Iowa student found dead outside a college building is among the victims of the deadly freeze. Hospitals have been treating patients reporting frostbite as life across a swath of the nation grinds to a halt. The ISIS blast may have still come on Thursday. 90 million people, a third of the U.S., has seen temperatures minus 17 degrees Celsius or below. Some 250 million Americans overall have experienced the polar vortex conditions, but certain states such as Florida have escaped the brutal chill. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. Now let's take a look at the Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 810. Let's now turn our attention to the Demar Harbour Bridge and the Barbies River Bridge schedules. That's a wrap of tonight's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. Chief Justice rules no confidence motion was properly passed. The president and cabinet should consider to resign. Chief Justice of Forms 33 is an absolute majority of all elected members of the National Assembly. British government fired a SOC advisor after he set up business in Guyana. And in sport, England bowled out for 187 as West Indies fast bowlers prevail. Qatari broadcast at 22 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Have a good night.